गुड मॉर्निंग हियर द चैप्टर इज अगेन द सेम इट इज विस्कस फ्लो एंड प्रीवियस टू दिस विस्कस फ्लो वाज डिस्कस्ड फॉर फ्लो थ्रू सर्कुलर पाइप एंड फ्लो बिटवीन पैरेलल प्लेट्स and of course the flow was considered to be laminar in nature okay here uh we are going to discuss viscous resistance of german bearings you know that uh, there are more bearings such as foot step bearing okay then collar bearing for all the cases uh this analysis will be made in different videos okay in this video only this topic will be covered viscous resistance of german wear you know that for machine parts there are moving parts in machines there are moving parts and for moving parts uh lubrication is required to minimize the wear and tear to minimize the resistance etc okay so lubrication is required so for the purpose of lubrication what is used uh, is oil oil is used a uh, different oils are there not a single one different oils are there and uh, for different purposes for different machine parts different oils are used and you know that if oil is having much viscosity and that is what will happen power absorbed to overcome the resistance offered by the viscous fluid will be more because if viscosity is much then shear stress will be much shear stress will be much and in that case uh, resistance offered by the oil will be much and if resistance is much then torque will be much and if torque is much then power absorbed will be much okay so what do you need to do you have to use light oil but there is one problem with light oil if you use light oil the minimum thickness of the oil which is required that cannot be obtained if you use too much light oil okay that means there should be a balance in between light oil and the highly viscous oil light oil means what light oil means uh, oil having less viscosity or low viscosity okay oil having low viscosity that is called light oil and if the fluid or the oil is highly viscous in that case thickness of the oil felt will be more but power absorbed will also be more so being an engineer you have to select a suitable oil for the moving parts okay and everything depends upon calculation so here we are going to uh, show you uh, a simple calculation actually just uh, for the purpose of design this calculation is not used instead better calculations means better mathematical analysis are available and those are used okay but uh, just by observing this uh, video uh, you will get an idea about the calculation okay so uh, what we, uh, what we need to do uh, i have taken a pipe you can see this is a pipe of circular cross section having a radius of r and capital d is the diameter and this is the german bearing okay this is the bearing okay this is the bearing and the bearing is having a length of l capital l is the length and here um, different colors is required here there is oil okay here there is oil viscous oil of thickness t this t is the t is not time here t is the thickness of the oil t is the thickness of the oil and is the length okay so uh, and suppose this uh, shaft this, this is not pipe actually sorry that was my mistake that is it is not pipe it is a shaft and it is rotating okay with n rpm n is what n is rpm okay if n is rpm then in that case uh, what is the linear velocity 
linear velocity is you know that linear velocity v is equal to omega into r linear velocity v is equal to v is equal to omega into r here r is the radius of the shaft okay so and omega is what it is equal to 2 pi n by 60 right omega is angular speed and it is equal to 2 pi n by 60 where n is rpm rpm of the shaft okay and r is what it is half of the diameter am i right r is half of the diameter means this diameter d so this becomes what pi d n by 60 this is what this is the linear speed of the shaft okay now uh, to calculate viscous uh, resistance first of all we need to calculate shear stress offered by the oil okay shear stress or the tangential stress offered by the fluid so for that purpose we are going to use newton's law of viscosity means we are just considering that the oil which is being used here is uh, newtonian fluid okay so assuming that thing we are going to uh, use that formula shear stress shear stress tau tau this is equal to what mu du dy du dy is what it is velocity gradient this is known to you and mu is viscosity or the coefficient of dynamic viscosity okay and uh, this du dy this can be written as v minus 0 divided by t instead of dy the thickness okay this can be used t and du can be written as v v means velocity linear speed at the surface of the shaft and zero is where zero is the bearings those are statics so the fluid in contact with the bearings there will be no motion using no slip boundary condition we are uh, concluding this one okay no slip boundary condition there is no relative velocity in between the bearing and the oil okay and since the thickness is very small in that case we can assume that uh, variation in velocity is linear so if you assume variation in velocity is linear then only you can write instead of du v minus zero otherwise uh, if velocity profile is known then in that case you have to use that profile to get the velocity gradient okay okay this is very simple calculation in actual practice these calculations are not used okay these calculations are not used okay rigorous mathematical analysis is there if you want to study uh, if you want to design a bearing okay but just to get an idea about the calculation you can see this one you can watch this one and of course uh, this is in your syllabus so you have to take preparation of this otherwise what will happen this is not you that is not you okay so mu into v minus 0 by t so this is equal to what mu and v is what v it is 1 by t this t and v is what v is equal to this one pi dn by 60 okay that means this is what this is mu pi dn divided by 60 into t right 60 into t so this is what this is shear stress okay so to get the force or the resistance offered by the oil on what on the shaft okay that is how much that is equal to this shear stress multiplied by the concerns area what is the area length is l diameter is d so pi d l okay that is the surface area of the shaft in contact with the oil okay pi d l periphery or the circumference multiplied by this length l periphery is pi into t okay then resistance okay i am not writing the full sentences okay this is c resistance offered by the oil okay is equal to tau into this capital a means area okay so this is equal to tau is equal to this much pi d n one mu is there mu pi d n by 60 t and area is pi into d into l 
right so there are two terms pi d as right so this becomes what mu square of pi will appear and square of d also will appear then n and then 60 into t so this is resistance say this resistance is in newton okay okay we are going to use here si unit and according to that resistance will be a newton this is what this is force this here since was in newton per square meter okay because we are going to calculate power absorbed in terms of what that's why we are from the very beginning we are going to use si unit okay so resistance is equal to this much so resistance is this much then therefore what is the torque torque is equal to you know that you know torque denoted by t okay capital t you know torque not temperature it is torque capital t torque is equal to what this resistance multiplied by the radius of the shaft okay so this resistance is this much so i am going to write that one pi mu pi square d square into n divided by 60 this is 60 okay this is 60 60 t and it is equal to uh, into radius that means half of the diameter okay so half of the diameter so again d comes in the picture therefore this becomes mu pi square d cube okay n divided by 2 into 60 t is writing 120 i have written here 2 into 60 t mu pi square d cube n okay uh, let me check whether the entire board is visible or not okay there is some portion left in the left hand side okay so this portion can be used for the further calculation so torque is now known okay then what is power absorbed or the power required to overcome this resistance or this torque uh, it is how much it is equal to you know that uh, power is equal to torque into omega right omega means angular speed so power absorbed i am going to write only power and power uh, uh, okay let me write this power denoted by p this is equal to t into omega okay again i need to check okay okay everything is visible power is power denoted by p it is equal to torque multiplied by the angular speed and t is this much so here i can write that thing just copy from there mu pi square d cube in right divided by 2 into 60 t 2 into 60 t this is 60 and omega is equal to what omega is equal to again this 2 pi n by 60 so multiply this by 2 pi n by 60 right so these two and these two are cancelled pi then this becomes pi cube and you will get n square so where i should write so just i am copying the result here okay somewhere here i am copying the result so this is equal to mu and then pi cube will appear pi cube will appear pi square into pi d cube remains same it is d cube and n becomes n square okay n becomes n square and then these two and these two are cancelled so this can be written this way okay so this is the result okay let me check whether the result is uh, okay uh, one thing is missing what is missing this pi dl so this n will be n is missing from everywhere am i right that l is missing so in resistance n will appear l should appear in torque also in torque also that l should appear so here l should appear okay l should appear then torque is known so this l should appear and here also this l should appear am i right 
Now it is matching with the book. Okay. Mu pi cube d cube n square mu pi cube d cube n square l divided by 60 into 60 into t. Why I have written this 60 into 60 into t? Because in book it is written this that way 60 into 60 into t. Otherwise you can directly uh, write uh, 3 6 double zero into t. Okay. Whenever I am going to uh, record videos, these educational videos, I need to uh, consult few books and according to books, uh, this way the formula or the formula are given, okay? And I am doing the same thing, nothing else, nothing new I am doing, okay? Uh, anyway, so this L should appear, that was, uh, I just by mistake I missed to write that L here. Anyway, so this is the end of the video. So this is the power absorbed and if we use SI unit, then in that case the result will be in terms of what? Okay. The result will be in terms of what? So this is the end of this video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you have any queries, please write in the comment box. Okay. I'll try, I'll try my level best to answer to all your queries. Anyway, this is the end of this video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day to all of you.